Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 123 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a 1-3 meetup game, my January meetup game, at Orange City Racing and Car Club in Orlando, Florida. I have a bunch of hands to go over, but before we get into them, I wanted to give a quick reminder about the Kentucky meetup game for myself, as well as Greg Goes All In and Poker Face Ash, it will be March 3rd in Franklin, Kentucky. We have some 2-5 action. We're going to have an inaugural tournament on the 4th, and there's going to be a lot of great events and a lot of fun people there, so I hope to see you there. If you can't make that or any of my other meetup games, I am constantly playing online on my Poker Bros Club, so if you're unable to come to one of my live events, happy to battle across the virtual felt. If you have any questions about my upcoming events, travel schedule, meetup game information, or even just want to throw me a hand history, feel free to message me on Instagram. I'm happy to get back to most people on pretty much anything. And without further ado, let's roll the tape. All right, we're at the January 1-3 meetup game. $500 max buy-in, so that's what I buy in for. And with the game just starting, people are playing a little bit tight, so I'm going to raise 7-6 offsuit to $15. And when everyone folds, I'm going to show, hopefully lighten up the game, Get people playing a few more hands, a bit funner of atmosphere. Let's get things going. But the first hand of actual note is definitely a doozy. It folds to me in middle position. I have pocket queens. I raised to ten dollars. Probably should raise to fifteen, but I raised to ten as the game was playing a little bit tight at the moment. Want to get some action. The cutoff raises to thirty, and then it folds back to me. I'm definitely gonna go for a four bet here. Queens is I think too strong to just call. Want to get some more money into this pot. Well, I think I have the best hand, definitely going to raise this one up. I make it $100. Hoping for a call so we can proceed accordingly and navigate some post-flop poker. But my opponent does not call. And he does not fold. No, he actually raises all in for approximately the $500 buy-in. As it's getting counted out, I am deep into the tank. Like, truthfully, on 2, 5, and below, how many 5 bets are ever even ace-king? How many of them are even kings? They're like always aces. So I think I have to be disciplined here. I don't think my opponent ever has worse than aces or kings. Kings would be a much easier call for me, but for a five bet, I just truthfully don't think my opponent ever has worse. So I do an extremely annoying, nitty, four bet fold with pocket queens. And my opponent asks if I'd like to see, and sure, why not? It's a meetup game. And he has... Pocket jacks. So a very big missed opportunity. Very annoying spot, but it's not every day you see someone five bet jacks. Nice hand, sir. Well, now we're in for 800. That and some other smaller hands made me top off a bit. Before we arrive at the next hand of note. With a button straddle, the under the gun player raises to 20. And the under the gun plus one, three bets to 60. Folds to me on the button with ace king. And again, either of these meetup games have the most action ever, or everyone actually has a hand here. I contemplate 4-betting, however, in this particular hand, the 3-better is actually a very tight player. Probably the second tightest person at the whole table, so I think 4-betting would be a mistake in this configuration. So I'm going to just call and play Ace-King in position on this one. The owner of the gun opener decides to call as well. So we are 3 ways to an ace-high board. I feel like I have the best hand 100% of the time. Only a single combination of pocket aces are beating me at this point. The preflop 3 better continues for $100. Now at this point, I think he either has ace king, ace queen, ace jack, something like that. Either way, maybe kings will just not be willing to fold. Some people get married to their hands and just can't let them go when they're, it's pretty clear they're behind. Additionally, with a flush draw and a straight draw out there possible, I don't want to just call and let the under the gun opener have a decent price to be able to continue in this hand. So we're just going to jam, hopefully get all the money in now, now while we have the best hand. And I'm all in for approximately $500. The only gun plus one player only has about 200 behind. So actually surprised to see him fold. But he claims he had pocket queens. So pocket queens are definitely a horrible hand in this meetup game. Well, the $800 buy-in is looking closer to $800. Feeling better about it. Before this really fun hand happens. I don't think I'm raises to 15. I'm in the cutoff with four or five of clubs. Don't come to my own meetup game to fold. I play a lot of hands and try to mix it up. So we're definitely going to call this one. Button calls and we're three ways to a flop of queen eight four. One club. When the preflop aggressor checks, 
I really don't see him checking with top pair ever. Thinking he's relegated to ace, king, ace, jack, something like that, and I could have all the queens make him draw pretty thin. We're gonna throw out a bet here. Additionally, with some backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draws, we have a lot of potential to double barrel given some safe return cards. But we start out with a $20 bet. However, the under the gun opener, he's going to continue for a later street. Hoping for a club, but we do gain equity in the seven of diamonds. Don't give me hope. Well, I definitely was going to double barrel if I picked up equity. Gut shot's not a whole lot, but like I said, he shouldn't really have a queen all that often, so we're going to throw in the second barrel of $60. And to this bet, my opponent folds. So it's fun to get a little cheeky bluff through. Next, interesting hand. With a button straddle, I open at $20 with pocket queens. This time it does not get five bet as the button just calls. Flop is ace, queen, jack. So pretty great for me. I really think I have too much of the board locked up to bet. My opponent took a bit of time before calling, so I really don't think he has an ace all too often here to get value from. So I'm going to check in hopes that he catches up a little bit. When he checks it back, the turn is the jack of clubs. So now kind of a fun board. I expect my opponent to have a jack here. He would definitely bet when checked too, and I can check raise. He may bluff with single clubs or made clubs. But again, thinking he doesn't really have an ace all too often, I check a second time. He checks it back, and the river is the jack of hearts. So really kind of ridiculous run out. I don't really see myself getting paid by anything, except I guess maybe pocket fives or something. So I have to bet super small here, hope to get some value when I have a pretty strong full house. I only bet $20. My opponent calls, and queens are definitely going to be good on this one. Following that, I'm under the gun with 7-8 offsuit. Yes, we mix it up at these 1-3 meetup games. When I make it $15, I get 6 callers trying to make the video and crack my hand, so we're going 7 ways to a flop of Queen-8-6. Rainbow. Well, I'd say flopping middle pair is pretty good. Definitely want to thin the field. I do have a backdoor straight draw possibility if called. But there's over $100 in possible dead money out there as no one actually has to have a queen. So I'm going to bet $60. Hopefully take it down. That would be a great result. I don't even get past the player to my direct left. He calls. Everyone else decides to fold. So we're heads up to a turn card. Which is the seven of spades. Turning two pair feels pretty good. I really hope he has a queen now. Now instead of semi-bluffing, we can bet for value. Throw out $120. Pretty confident I have the best hand. My opponent willing to five bet with jacks. I feel pretty good about my exact holding. He makes the call. And the river is the ten of hearts. Not the cleanest card as queen nine, queen ten, eight nine, and nine ten are all hands that I think would play the exact same way by my opponent. There's plenty of hands that beat me. However, I wish I would have went for some thinner value on this one. I do think my opponent also has king, queen, ace, queen, maybe eight six at some frequency. And that can pay off a third barrel, so... I think there's plenty of hands to get value from, but I choose to play this somewhat dicey card as a check call. When I check, my opponent checks it back and has queen jack. So definitely did not get all the value that was possible on this hand, but hopefully we will be able to bet a little bit thinner in the future. But the stack's looking good. We're profitable on the day of this $800 buy-in. Happy about that. It folds all the way to the cutoff. He raises to $20. I'm on the button with ace-jack offsuit. Gonna just call this one. Had been three betting a bit. I would like to have some stronger hands in my calling range. And I think there's more value with this particular hand against this particular opponent on future streets. So we're just gonna make the call on this one. And the flop is ace-king-9, two clubs. My opponent wagers $15. Thinking I have the best hand like 100% of the time, I'm just gonna call this one. Hopefully he will continue betting. He was not the type to give up when he had nothing. Very aggressive. So we're just gonna call this one. Hopefully get more value on future streets. When the turn is the eight of spades, 
My opponent does not slow down. He bets $45. And now with two flush draws, of which I have zero blockers, we're definitely going to put in the raise here. We want to charge these flush draws when we think we have the best hand. Single kings as well as like ace 10 hands we can get value from. So we're going to put in the raise right now to $110. Get the betting lead and theoretically get to make the decision on how much goes in the middle at the river when called. My opponent decides to make the call, so we are still heads up to river, which is a board pairing 8 which misses all the flush draws. When my opponent checks to me, he has exactly $200 in his stack. And I think this is gonna be one of those times where I go for thin value. I think a king would be unwilling to give up here. It's pretty unlikely I have an ace here. Additionally, if my opponent for some reason had ace queen, we now get the chop with the undercard board pair. And also if I down bet this river, he may turn a missed flush draw into a bluff as this opponent had been willing to bluff. So I bet only $100. My opponent thinks for approximately 20 seconds, I'm feeling pretty good about this, before finally going all in for $200, to which I'm never folding. I make the call. And he has king eight of hearts. You know, it seems like bad things are always happening to me. Like I have bad luck or something. You don't have bad luck. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. <laughs> So this hand I made approximately three mistakes in to lose the absolute max. I chose not to three bet pre-flop, which theoretically just wins. Not to raise on the flop, which probably would get my opponent to fold and just wins. Raise on the turn, which I think is fine. I don't think that's a mistake all too often. But then on the river, I choose to bet to value on myself when I could easily just check back with a ton of showdown value. So... Three mistakes all in one hand will be an expensive one, and it will go to my opponent. So, nice hand on that one. For him, not me. Alright, learning from the last one, with a mill position open at 10, there's one call. I'm gonna 3-bet ace-jack this time. This time I make it $35. The initial opener calls, and the button calls as well, so we're going three ways to a flop. Of king, eight, four, two spades. I'm going to continue here. I have ace, king, pocket, kings in range. My opponents pretty much can't, so I'm going to see bet for $50. In the moment, also, I actually thought I had ace, jack of spades. So when I double check my cards and see it's just the jack of spades. I am in huge trouble. Somewhat disappointed. I guess it's wishful thinking combined with tilt that made me believe that. But anyway, heads up to a turn card, which is a jack. Well, that's pretty good. We turn some showdown value, and we don't have the ace of spades, so my opponent could have ace x of spades. But when I check it, my opponent bets $80. Not going to fold when I turn some showdown value. We make the call. Turn is the nine of diamonds. Pretty good card, all things considered. I check to my opponent. He checks back king queen. You know, combining some mistakes with some tilt. Also not a great little run here in the middle. But that's fine. When I button straddle, a middle position player opens to 30. The cutoff calls, I'm going to call with 7-8 off suit. Seems to be the most profitable hand for me today. We go three ways to 7-7-6. Seven, seven, Pretty amazing result for my particular hand. Preflop aggressor continues for $25. Now the cutoff raises to 80. And in my mind, this looks like a pretty good situation. The cutoff could easily have like 8-9-4-5, random 6, maybe pocket 8s. But I really think that the preflop aggressor has an over pair, like 10s, jacks, something like that. And I don't really think he's going to fold to an all-in. As I look at like I'm tilting pretty hard, haven't had a winner in a bit. So we're going to go for the jam, hopefully catch these people in a light call, hopefully get all the money back and then some. As I really shouldn't have a 7 here, I could easily have any of the draws I just mentioned. But when I go all-in, the preflop aggressor folds and the cutoff folds as well. So we pretty much punt a pretty juicy value spot but either way we'll take the win now we're gonna try to play just a single hand good with a bunch straddle i make it 20 with king jack off suit middle position calls button calls so we're going three ways to a flop of jack five five thinking i have the entire board locked up i don't think i need to bet here give my aggressive opponents a chance to bluff at it or catch up I choose to put this into a top pair good kicker check call mode. On the flop, it checks through. When the turn is the 10 of clubs, I'm definitely going to bet here. Hopefully my opponent's turn to 10, have a worse jack. 
just don't believe me as I'm pretty unbelievable. So I bet small $20, hopefully get value from some weaker hands. The middle position player folds, but the button decides to call. When the river is the eight of diamonds, I think this is a great spot to just bluff catch my opponent. He's super happy to throw money in there when he has nothing. He has a super wide range. We're going to lay the trap and check. Hope that he feels the urge to put out a bet out there. Oh, Trap works perfectly. He bets 65, a snap, and a snap, you're good. So, I think this is one of the few times I actually played a hand well on this session, but it doesn't take that many to get some profit. Which brings us to the hand of the night. With one limp, I'm in middle position with ace, queen of hearts. I'm going to raise to $15. Only the one late position player and the limper call. So, we're going three ways to a flop of jack, nine, six with one heart. So seeing as I bricked everything, when it checks to me, I'm gonna check, hopefully get to see a free card. As I check call sometimes with top pair good kickers, sometimes it leads me to get some free turn cards. This is not one of those cases as the later position player bets $20. When the middle position player calls, I think it's fine to peel here. My over cards should be live. If I turn backdoor hearts, I can probably put some pressure on my opponents, as well as like a king or a backdoor straight card can also lead me to some winning possibilities. So I make the call as well. When turns to three of hearts, definitely made my hand of ace high look a lot better. When the position player checks, I don't really think leading here is the best. I have plenty of equity, and I think the layer position player will let it check through a lot of the time as he was called in two spots. But I am proven wrong when he continues for $20 again. And now the middle position player calls. At this point, I think calling would be a mistake and folding would be a mistake. That leads one really good option and that's to raise. The consistent 20 and 20 makes me think these opponents are pretty weak, like maybe one pair at best. I don't really see them having too many strong hands and I have the nut draw and only ace high. So we're gonna bet here, hopefully if a jack folds, that'd be a pretty great result. So I raised to $120, and plan works good. The flop and turn aggressor decides to let it go. But after a decently long tank, the middle player decides to call. Well, that's not a good sign, but he took so long, I think he only has like one pair at best, thinking that I could probably get him off it on this river card. Except the river is the seven of hearts. So now we hope he doesn't have a one pair hand. Because one pair hand's probably not going to pay me off when I bluff, raise, and river the nuts. So when he checks to me, I look at the board and think about my hand and my position. Think if I had like queen 10 or 7, 8, 4, 5, any of those missed straight draws. I think that I would just have to go for the jam and hope to get a single pair to fold. So I think I have to go for the jam and hope a single pair hero calls when I have the nuts. So after a bit of thinking, I announce all in and my opponent snap calls with nine ten of hearts so he did call flop and turn with a single pair and just happened to river a very unlucky river for him but extremely fortunate for me as as i win probably one of the biggest pots at this meetup game and now this 800 hundred dollar buy-in looks super solid before we get to a final hand of note with a bunch straddle, early position makes it 16. There's one caller, I have pocket sevens. Seems like a reasonable call. We can set mine and also play in relative position. A later position and the button call. So we're gonna go five ways to a flop, which comes out nine, four, five, two clubs. Only one overcard feels pretty good for pocket sevens. And when the preflop aggressor checks to me, I think this is pretty much go time to bet with a pair. Pretty unlikely anyone has a nine. I blocked the flush draws, so that's somewhat unlikely as well. Also plenty of backdoor straight possibility for some double barrels if called. But we're gonna semi bluff on this flop. I bet $50. Well, later position button and preflop aggressor folds. But the first caller decides to call. So we're heads up to a turn card, which is the Queen of Clubs. When he checks to me, I think that's a pretty gross card. Don't really think I can bet on it. Obvious draw gets there. If he had random over cards, a lot of those get there. Maybe a nine would fold to a second barrel, but we do pick up a flush draw of our own. So we're going to choose to just check this one back. And somehow we river a flush. And my opponent checks to me. Seven high flush on a four liner. I don't really think it's going to get called by worse all too often if ever so i although i think i have the best hand i'm just gonna check this one back and just gonna show no need to make my opponent show first 
even though I flipped the wrong seven first. And the flush will be good on this one. So another nice little pot to end the night. You get there like every time. So for this 1-3 meetup game, we're into the game for $800. Out of the game for $1,535, which is a profit of $735 across six hours equated to $122 an hour or 41 big blinds an hour. Yeah, I honestly don't think I played very well this day. I think I played quite poorly, to be honest. Plenty of spots where I made massive mistakes that cost me a lot of money, but... You know, you just got to review your sessions and go over them and try to get better from the mistakes. And maybe part of it was the less serious atmosphere of a meetup game. But regardless, we are going to just keep moving forward. And I will see you all next week.